As well as visual arts practitioners, there are many different types of artists in this local area. I am going to speak to two from the world of poetry right now. Two beautiful poetesses. First, I am going to speak to the one and only Sharifa Energy. Um, since the start of um, what's happened, I've mainly just been supporting, like, helping out with the donation centre at mm. Akron Village, um, supporting people from Grandfather Tower and that uh, have been affected um, in the local community, whether it's like supporting them mentally, um, mm. just by being there to like, um, as a source of just support or yeah. um, being able to just support people in terms of like what they need. Uh, yeah, it's just the reality of like, learning to process like what's happened. Um, I'm a, I, I write poetry, so that's how I deal with what's happening um, around me or my own experiences. Um, like to deal with like trauma and stuff so for me I obviously like um, you know I've seen how like a lot of the children um, they're not even some of them they're not even talking about what's happened you know they like engage and as soon as someone mentions it you know they withdraw because obviously it's still traumatic based on the fact like 10 weeks later they're not being housed mm. um, so I think just based on that reality I kind of want to you know do things a bit more creatively to allow um, children and not even just children like adults and other people that were there or um, have been affected to kind of have find other ways of like uh, dealing with their trauma so I don't always think like counseling and other things that type of work is always the most beneficial yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know it might be slightly disengaging because even for myself like people kept saying to me like Sharifa you saw the fire you need a therapist or should I get your counsellor and I was just like I just want to be around people that's that were there on the night because and that also, makes me feel you had your writing as well to as an outlet to yeah, help you exactly so it's about passing it's about supporting other people that might need similar tools um you know like uh, other than that we've kind of i've uh, helped organize like one of my friends to come down to do like a, a muay thai class and i think okay. it's really um important to do like different types of art so like even martial arts mm. uh, as a way of like processing like the emotion it's really overwhelming and you know you um, the stages of grieving um, grief is you know like you go through a lot of anger as well so I think you yeah. know for, uh, to allow people to a safe space to let out their trauma um, and that's been really beneficial for myself and other people that I've seen like that have been coming to engage so it's just finding different means for different people because we're all you know the same way that we learn we all learn in different ways like people mm. will deal with things in different ways and it's about allowing that process mm -hmm. so not just writing poetry like allowing people to perform yeah. and allowing people to share and allowing people to express allowing people to pretend to be somebody else um, share through character mm. you know and I'm really keen on like supporting what's happened like supporting them people that are most affected mm -hmm. yeah it's you know this this isn't going to just disappear and that's what we kind of have to remember like to think about long-term impact long-term change um yeah. and using skills like not just like, like your artistic skills but like you know youth work so like mentoring skills that sort of thing because i've connected a lot with like quite a lot of the young people mm. the children um so I want to maintain that relationship. I don't just want to be like, yeah, we're here now. Hi, like, really nice to meet you, and then just go because this is like, this is gonna have a long-term influence on like their whole psyche, their reality. Um, you know, they've lost, they've lost neighbors, they've lost friends, they've lost family members, and I think we have to kind of remember that. Yeah, people. This is gonna, this is a this is a scar on the mind. This is a scar on the heart. This is a scar on your whole perception of the world. You know, yeah, yeah. and it's um, especially for people that might not realize what kind of society we're actually living in what kind of country this is you know you see this democratic england but for people that have had like a shock to the system like oh my god did this really happen did the kensington or the council or the tmo were they all a part of this you know mm. like for them it's going to be a real slice into their whole re the way that they perceive the world and that's the type of people that will need a lot of support because you know um your whole Change. Yeah, your whole reality is completely changed. Like yeah. the way that you see things as well, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. not just your own experience. You know, like mentally, you're having to shift your whole perspective on what this world's about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, in regards to your poetry, you have been able to be an inspiration to the young people because you recently had a ITV interview, and they may have been able to watch it and be inspired to do more poetry. Great gain 
gain healing via their words, the, the words that um, are written down? Yeah, like, I think, I haven't really sent it to any of the kids that I know. I've oh. sent it to mainly like the, the adults because I don't want to upset them. I don't want them to see, I don't want, like it's about being mindful about what you're talking about in front of the children. But I think it's not really about being an inspiration as such. I think it's about showing people that you can tell your own story. Like you can, you know, you can manage you can, you know, like people, uh, there's been times when I've been with people that are survivors and they're like, yeah, get the media down. I want them to know all of this, 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 what's happening. Like, they're not treating us right at the Westway or they're not treating us right at the curve. And, you know, there's other ways, like, to tell what's happening um, through story mm. and to capture that. Because it's poetry, there's documentation of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, that's one way, but people can do it. You can do it in all types of ways through painting and there's other arts as well Mm -hmm. so you know respect to all the other artists that are working on this and like I'm not the only poet I'm not the only writer that's working on this so Mm -hmm. you know I don't want to get all the credit for it you know there's like going to be a lot of people that will be working Mm -hmm. on like the artistic creative healing side and you know there's other people like Princess Emmanuel that's already been doing a lot of workshops Mm -hmm. Um, so you know I intend to after carnival do more like one-on-one work yeah. with the children that I know and they want to do it so yeah. Oh, that'd be fantastic to help yeah. them heal. Yeah. The one thing I'm sure you notice from Sharifa and all the people in this film so far is the selflessness that came out of these tragic circumstances. The way people had no regard for self, they cared more about people who were less fortunate than themselves and chose to help instead of stop and stare. Thankfully, we have delightfully diverse creative light in our community. Before we speak to another illuminator, Empress Emmanuel, I want to show you a new beacon in the West 11 area. This space, not too far from where Sophie Lodge did her 24 Hearts project, in between the Latimer Christian Centre and the Lancaster Methodist Church, right in front of Maxilla Studios, a transformation has happened. This was once a dead space, but due to the warm-hearted people like Livingston, seen here painting a bench that he made while having a conversation with him, and cornbread, aka Michael, seen here finishing off a cabinet he personally made to house a cooker so that the volunteers can make delicious food for the public and many other ingenious people who saw so much sorrow they made a point to make a change and uplift their community. Of course they got council backing and then eventually groomed this space into this wonderful community area. So I'm here now sat at the Phoenix project it's still underneath the flyover um, but what they have done Ruben and Andrew the founders of this particular idea is they've got people to donate books they've made chairs they've even got um, chess and a backgammon board where people can just come and chill read a book I found some good ones Game of Thrones Two Towers classic Oliver Twist and I saw The Help as well somewhere which was a good film as well I am going to stay here sit down and read some Game of Thrones
um, what I've done basically is decided to form a poetry book um, from our area, people from our area, local people, to voice their voices of truth and their opinions about what has happened. It could be through poetry, it could be through prose, through quotes, eyewitness accounts, but I've mainly focused on the poetry. Um, I've run a few workshops in the area as well, so anyone that watches this that would like a poetry for Grand Prix workshop, please do find us online as well, um, just for the people really. Uh, sometimes we get people that are survivors from Grenfell, sometimes it's just people in the community. Um, and as long as there's a the love and support in the community, then it is a healing process. And is that the reason why you're doing this book of poetry? Predominantly to heal, use the truth to heal it's the people? to heal but also to make people more aware. Because not all the poems and not all the lyrics that will be expressed will necessarily be healing. Some of it will be... Uh, maybe angry kind of uh, expression which could be healing in an indirect way as well uh, but definitely it's to get people of all ages from all walks of life children adults young people different cultural backgrounds different abilities I'm not um, scrutinizing or being biased based on your ability or your or your um, the quality of your poetry or the background that you're from so basically it's for anyone and everyone especially if you're from the area, but also people that just want to, that have been affected by what happened in Grenfell that might not be from the area as well, so yeah. Like so, your friend Sean? Yeah, exactly, like my friend Sean, Mr Kick, who's from up north, who is also a part of the Poetry for Grenfell book, and the short video that I'm making. I'm Sean Clark, I'm based in Bristol, I'm from Leeds, but, you know, I'm from the planet, mm. <laughs> if we get down to that. So how come you're in um, West London, not yeah, in Hill today? I'm visiting a friend, an associate, who's a poetess, and she, you know, I've got a lot of admiration for her. She took part in a poetry book that I'm involved with, and she wants me to now get involved in, in her concept, which is a poetry book for Ben Bell, raising some money and helping out some of the victims. Mm. Um, and how, what was the response like from your end leads and stuff um, in regards to um, Yeah, Grenfell. do you know what? I think there's quite a lot of solidarity. I've seen that, you know, I've seen a lot of it online obviously, but in Bristol where I'm based at the moment, there are people coming together and doing stuff and trying to raise money and make mm. a significant contribution. And then, and that's why you've come down these... Yeah, today? it's partly to take part, yeah, to do what I can, you know. Um, we just, I just performed some poetry for an, an excerpt of the piece I submitted for the book which is going to be dedicated, the poetry book which is going to be dedicated to the cause, you know and helping out, so yeah it's good to sort of just be here and feel it a bit more, you know mm. experience it a bit more, feel a bit more connected to what's going on as well So I'd just like to share with you a, a tiny excerpt uh, from one of my poems from primeval waters, you lost sons and daughters. Take a stand, take command against the new world order. Growing vessels, growing seeds, you use of Adam and Eve. Take a stand for the demand to protect our breed. This ain't no time to divide. It's time to unite to survive. Drop the ego that you're feeding. Do what's right by these lost lives. It ain't no competition for census recognition. Take a decision to help in every which way you can upon this mission. A good deed from pure intention can go a very long way. Ignore the jealous judgments. Believe in your heart and soul. Won't go astray. No one has the right to point the finger at your contributions, at your intentions. Do what you can, when you can. The ancestors appreciate your efforts. We are here with a purpose. To restore hope for all that's hurting. Bring justice to our people that have been targeted by this evil. Greed, power, supremacy is what we aim to defeat. Trust in the works of the Most High and all your prayers will be sure to be met. I know it hurts, but you must stay strong. The Most High will always carry you when you feel you can no longer go on. Stay faithful and trust that a better day soon come. If it's your time, it is. If not, then please gratefully live on through inner silence. Faith in your heart and purposeful prayers. Focus on the good efforts of the people while we bump fire and then political prayers, players. 
unjust laws and unjustified killings on, just actions for unjustified winnings on, just laws and unjustified killings on, just actions.